Yo, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at stabilizing naked Blackmagic footage. Uh, as you might know, Blackmagic recently released a firmware update that uh, unlocked the gyro that's within the cameras and they started recording the gyro data within the B-RAW file. So Blackmagic developed it to work with uh, DaVinci Resolve and they've added features to DaVinci Resolve to allow you to stabilize your footage. Uh, that wasn't so great for people who ran their cameras naked because there wasn't any way of changing the orientation of the sensor, which obviously they would have no reason to add. But luckily for us, uh, we've got GyroFlow. <laughs> And recently Gyroflow got a nice update that allowed you to put B-RAW files directly into the software and stabilize them within Gyroflow. Whereas before you had to convert the file to another format, then put it into Gyroflow with gyro data from another source and try to pair it up, then export it all and ah, oh, it was quite a mess. But now it's pretty simple and quite clean and working really well. So yeah, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to download the software and the plugin for Gyroflow. Uh, then I'm gonna show you how to stabilize the footage, the B-RAW footage, and then I'm gonna show you how to bring that into Resolve and use the plugin and how to, and the best way I found to work with it within Resolve. <laughs> One of the only things that's really made this possible is uh, the ability to plug in the screen easily. So I've developed the, if you've seen my previous videos, you will see that I've just released my BMPCC screen extension that allows you to just really easily plug uh, the screen into the, into the camera to turn it on so that you can use the latest firmware. And uh, it's really made life easier now that we can do this and um, there's no messing about with external loggers. Uh, yeah, in the video I'm flying this craft which is a prototype three and a half inch frame for carrying the naked black magic. Uh, it's really not a great frame at all, there's a hell of a lot of noise, but it turns out that that's probably quite a good thing for making a video about stabilizing footage because it means A, the, the gyro data is going to be pretty rough. Uh, so as rough as anybody could expect, and the footage should be pretty crap and need stabilizing. Whereas most of the time my footage just doesn't need stabilization. <laughs> so yeah, let's check it out. Just give you a quick demonstration on how, how you record uh, on the latest firmware using the screen extension. I'm gonna head back to my place and see if we can get it to work through gyro flow. So now with my screen attached to the black magic, I can power up the camera, check my exposure and everything, which you're not really going to be able to see out here. Um, but the important thing is, is that I can unclip the screen and the camera, the camera remains powered up and you can start and stop record. That's that's the most important thing. Normally, if you're running the latest firmware, then it wouldn't even power up without the screen attached. Now, by using the angle markers on the top of the strut here, you can see that I've got my angle set on the 20 degree marker. And uh, so that's going to be used in gyro flow later on to uh, add in that angle so that it stabilizes correctly. I'll fly it around now and uh, yeah, let's we'll take a look at the footage and um, see if I can stabilize it.
Okay, so before we get started with running that footage through GyroFlow, uh, obviously you're going to need to download it. So head over to the GyroFlow release page and make sure you download the latest version, which at this time is version 1.2. Uh, this is the version that allows you to put the B-RAW, the Blackmagic RAW files directly into GyroFlow uh, and stabilize them without having to convert them first. Download the latest version of GyroFlow and install that. And for those of you who are going to be, who use Resolve, there's a plugin that they've made for DaVinci Resolve that allows you to run the GyroFlow stabilization within Resolve so you can uh, do all your color correction and stuff like that. Head over to GitHub and the GyroFlow OFX page and you'll find installation instructions. One thing to bear in mind, uh, as it says here, you just copy the GyroFlow uh, bundle into this folder. But the thing that me and a lot of other people always don't read is that if the folder doesn't exist, then you just need to create it. So you can see I've got common files, OFX plugins, and the bundle in there. If you go to common files and OFX isn't there, just create the folder and drop the plugins into it. That is how you install uh, the plugin. Super, super easy. Literally just drag and drop it into the folder and uh, you're ready to go. Right, with uh, GyroFlow loaded up, all default settings at the moment, uh, you should see same screen as this. Um, first thing we're gonna do is drag in uh, one of our B-RAW files and you'll see that it starts loading the gyro data that's attached to it. While that's loading, you can go ahead and select your lens profile. I'm using a <coughs> I'm using the Leowa 7.5mm lens at 4K DCI. So I just type black 7.5 and choose this official one here. Now in the recorded gyro data is this IMU orientation, which is set to Y, X, Z by default. That's for when the camera is all together and working as normal. Obviously when we make it naked, we're moving the sensor in a completely different position. So we need to adjust that. So go ahead and change that to Z, Y, X, all in lowercase letters. Next up, you can see that the gyro data is pretty noisy. Uh, that's simply because of the frame that I was flying it on. You saw the size of it and it was a prototype and uh, very, very noisy. Uh, it was kind of surprising that it flew as nicely as it did. It just goes to show how good Beta Flight 4.3 is really. Perfect for showing you <laughs> how to do the stabilization because yeah worst case scenario you're going to have black box you're going to have gyro recording like this and um, all you need to do if it looks pretty rough like that is apply a low pass filter so when you select low pass filter here you can see that it changes but it isn't actually going to use that low pass filter when it does the synchronization what you need to do is click advanced up here and then choose low pass filter and have 50 hertz there as well. So that when it does the sync, it's also gonna see the data like this. Next up, as I showed you in the field, I set the angle of my lens to 20 degrees using the markers on top. So all we have to do now is add 20 degrees in here. Obviously, if you set yours to a different angle, you would put in the angle that you set your cat, your lens at. Then you want to find a part of the video where red, green and blue are all move all have a bit of movement. So you can see here it's a bit of a dip in the blue, green and in the red there. So right there is a great place to do an auto sync. So right click, hit auto sync and let it do its thing. And when you zoom in, you can see that the trace, it, the lines are matching up quite closely. They're not perfect. And I found that this kind of changes. Um, not sure exactly why 
this is only slightly off. I'm presuming that it's where the angles aren't dead on what it thinks they are. But in my experience, I've smoothed quite a few files using this and it still comes out nicely smoothed anyway. So you can go ahead and play and see that it's it's smoothed. The way you tell that it's worked is that usually if it hasn't worked, it will be shaking around a lot, especially the tree lines. You'll see the trees like vibrating and moving uh, abnormally. And you can toggle the stabilization on and off there. You can see that it's it's not really rough, but it's quite it was bobbing up and down quite a bit there. So if I go back and show you that bit where he's where I'm flying along. So this forward flight here, stabilization just smooths it all out there, so it's nice and smooth. <laughs> That's the whole point of this. Unfortunately, you can't export B-RAW. Uh, in order to do that, you need to use the app, the OFX app that I showed you how to install earlier on. So I'll show you how to use that, that one now. So we're going to start with a fresh project of uh, on da Vin in DaVinci Resolve and the first thing we're going to do is set the project file uh, resolution to 4K DCI which is 4096 by 2160. Then we are going to drag our B-RAW file that we just stabilized in. I've got quite a good computer but even so using this uh, app using the plugin in Resolve is very resource intensive and it takes quite a while to process it. The One of the major ways you can speed this up is by changing your timeline proxy resolution to either half or quarter depending on how good your computer is. I don't have any issues running it at half but if you were in a rush perhaps you could run quarter. Of course you're not going to be able to see the resolution of your timeline is going to be affected by this. So I go with half uh, resolution, select your OpenFX filters here and if you scroll all the way to the bottom you will see the gyro flow one and you can just drag and drop that into onto your clip. Then when you select the effects tab up here you will see gyro flow and the gyro and it expects you to input a gyro flow file. So how do you get a gyro flow file? So we'll go back into gyro flow and down in the export tab here, if you select export project file including processed gyro data, that will create the gyro flow, flow file that you need for the plugin within Resolve. So it takes a couple of seconds and then within your folder you will find this gyro flow file. You need to know the path of that so telling Resolve exactly where to go to find this file. The easiest way to do that is to go into Properties, choose the Security tab and there you have the path to it there. You can copy that and then back in DaVinci Resolve we're just going to paste that into there, click off and it will start doing its thing. Now there's no progress bar, there's no little light telling you that it's working and that it's actually still processing the effects. Uh, the only way you can tell is that it won't play back smoothly straight away. Uh, it looks like mine's actually already rendered that whole thing. Uh, so you might find that it's really stuttery to start with and when you try to jump through the timeline it doesn't want to go. Uh, that just means that it's still working through all the effects. Um, another way you can check that is in Task Manager. You'll be able to see a bit of a spike of your memory usage and then when it slows down, uh, you'll know that it's finished processing it. So at this stage, you're gonna be thinking, right, okay, my gyro flow has been applied to the file. I can go around and I can edit it and put in more clips, do all my color grading and everything. And it's all nice and really easy. The reality of it is, is that as soon as you switch tabs now, it's going to reapply all those effects again. And every time you change a setting, it reapplies all the effects again, which is particularly annoying when you're color grading. Because as soon as you try to move a dial, you have to wait ages for it to apply all the settings. So I found the easiest way around this is to just disable the gyro flow effects so they're not active 
then go into your color tab and you're able to use all your b-roll settings set it to rec 7 i usually just set mine to rec 709 and just do a basic uh, bit of color grading just making sure the blacks are dark etc i'm not a pro color grader but yeah you can just tweak the settings and they all move and react to your controls unfortunately if you've got the gyro flow effects on it's it doesn't work like that and it's just not gonna it's not gonna run smoothly so do all your color grading cutting and effects and do everything else apart from adding the stabilization and then go back into your edit tab and turn on the gyro flow and it should apply all the effects um, that's the easiest way I found to to work with it one of the things I like about it is that you're still able to cut apart the file um, so obviously just take chunks out of your clip and it just applies the effects to the that small clip it doesn't mess up the timeline of it or anything um, again though every time you make a change you have to wait a few seconds usually a minute or two for it to actually take effect so yeah as I said do all your editing cutting and pasting and everything before turning on the gyro flow effect um, and you'll be good to go I really like the fact that you're able to use the gyro within the Blackmagic camera now to stabilize the footage. Before I never really bothered doing any stabilization, but now that the data is already on the file, it's kind of hard not to use it. Uh, there's no messing about with an external logger or anything. So yeah, the only thing you have to have is uh, a screen extension, which I've now sorted. So. Yeah, it's all good. Hopefully this video has been helpful and you'll be able to go out and stabilize your own naked black mag magics. And I look forward to seeing all the footage. Take it easy, laters.